Hi folks, it's Nate Picos of Blambot, and I thought I'd give you a guided tour of my default lettering template. So every letterer has their own template that they use to letter comics pages. Um, this is my default, meaning it's got all my assets, everything around the artboard. This white rectangle is the artboard, and everything around it I call assets. This has everything. So when I start a new project, I open this file. I decide which balloon styles I'm going to use, you know, which caption styles, and then I delete everything else that I'm not going to use, and I resave this file for that project. And then I open a fresh version of it for each page. So um, let's see, some things I need to tell you. I use the stroke method of lettering, which there are two, two styles, the stroke method and the layer method. Um, if you need to know specifics about what those are, you can go to blambot.com and find the better letterer infographics. And I think it's, I think it's number 15 that deals with the two different styles. So all templates basically use layers. You can see my layer window right here. And we'll start at the top and work our way down. Um, so the first one is the title block. And there's my title block. It's got the title and issue number is the page number. I change this, obviously, for every page and project. Um, the lettering layer, which is where all the text will be, all the dialogue, um, you know, caption lettering, stuff like that, title lettering. Next down, we have the sound effects layer, which obviously I make all the sound effects there. After that, we have balloons, which are where all these assets live, pretty much. Um, beneath that is beneath balloons, where sometimes I need like a sound effect to run beneath a balloon. I would design it on the beneath balloons layer. The art layer is where we drop art. Um, hopefully the art is at the correct size. This art board is 6.875 by 10.4375, which is the standard full bleed dimensions for American comics. Um, below that we have the bounding layer, which are these blue lines. See these blue lines? So that's this is the full bleed, the very outside perimeter of the artboard. And this next blue line in is the trim line, where hopefully, if it's precise, the comic book page gets trimmed at that point. So anything outside the trim line is probably going to get trimmed off. Inside we have the safe area, which all your lettering should pretty much fall inside the safe area unless you actually want something to be trimmed off. Sometimes you'll have a sound effect that runs off a page and you can just, you know, design it right to the edge. So, um, let's see. Let's just start at the top. Um, so here I've got some different musical notes in case someone is singing or whistling. Um, the top line is a little more hard edged the bottom line of notes are a little more organic looking. I tend to use the organic ones. I tend to use everything that's slightly more organic. It just I just like the look of it better. Um, this weird jumble of nonsense is just that. It's somebody mumbling or some dialogue that you're not actually supposed to be able to figure out. I, I use this quite a bit. Um, there's a couple of squinks up here, which is where when a tail, you know, someone's speaking from behind a door or something, you have a squink where the tail runs into the squink at the door. These are just a different kind of radio balloon, um, these little emanations. So I would use them, for instance, like you'd grab one, put one there, grab one, put one there, grab the whole thing, and make a balloon out of it just for like a, a different kind of radio balloon. Then you could have four points or two points or three points, however many points you want. Um, let's see, this is a text, like if someone's texting in the comic. A um, couple of different kinds of caption boxes. You'll notice these caption boxes have a very, very slight wiggle to the line. It's not a perfectly straight line, just a little bit more of an organic touch. Um, this is, I'm not sure even why I saved this in here, this is the Green Arrow caption box that I used for Green Arrow when I was working on that for about a year. I saved it in here, probably just for nostalgia's sake. A um, little bit of static, if you wanted to have somebody with a balloon, 
I think I had a creature once that spoke in static, and I came up with this, you know, something like that. Um, let's see, a heart. I think I designed that for I Hate Fairyland. It's come in handy every once in a while. Here's some weird balloons. Um, I, I, every once in a while I'll save something in here just because I think it looks cool and I want to remember to use it again. Otherwise I'll forget. There's so many different kinds of balloons that I'll, I never remember how I made something. Um, I don't use these all that often, but this one I really like. It's just, this is actually just two, two ovals with a different pattern of uh, dashed lines around them. Uh, different kind of radio balloon. Here's a whisper. This dashed, you know, the old style of um, whisper balloons where it had the dashed line around it. Something a little more mechanical, another dashed line. I guess I grouped most of my dashed line balloons up here. These are like energy emanating from a balloon kind of style, which, you know, you can stretch them and do that. Uh, that's actually a custom brush stroke, and I think I made a version of that for my first balloon pack that I sell on Blambot. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. Um, these were actually hand painted, dry brushed, I think, with a filbert brush and some ink on maybe watercolor paper, so I could get all this breakup around them. And I use these for, let's see, I designed them for the horror comic, The Me You Love in the Dark from Image. Um, for the ghost that's in there, and this is how I used it with this little bit of a blue splatter behind it for very airy balloons, kind of creepy. Uh, let's see. Let's start on this side over here. So these are just the most simple, basic, default, two sizes, uniform balloons that you'll find in pretty much most comics. I almost never use these anymore. I tend to like organic balloons a little bit more, which sort of takes us over here. These very almost perfectly round or irregularly round balloons, I actually hand lettered these with a circle template on my drafting board and scanned them in. Um, so you can see there's a little bit of wobble, which in print, you know, this looks a little bit more organic. And I use these when I have, want to use balloons that are perfectly round and very airy with a little bit of text in the middle of them. Um, what else? These balloons are the ones I use almost, you know, probably 50% of the time. So the most of any balloons. This, these balloons right here. Um, these are all slightly irregular. So their shapes are not perfectly uniform. There's a little bit of wobble to them. You know, these up here are a little bit wider at the top than the bottom, a little bit wider at the bottom than the top, and so on and so on. A little, you know, just a little bit of organic wobble to make it look like they were hand lettered, um, not using a circle template, but maybe just by hand and by eye. Let's see, uh, we'll go back up here since we skipped these. These are to simulate pencils, uh, pencil lines. I've, I've yet to use those, but they came out pretty cool. This is one of my favorite brushes I've ever made. This simulates um, a little bit of bleed from a tech pen so if I'm using a font for dialogue that is modeled after a tech pen style, I'll often use this tech pen style balloon, which sort of has this little bit of little bit of ink bleed around it. They just match really well. Um, this I think is a brush that I made that's kind of jaggedy. I don't use this very often. Another brush with um, sort of like a janky pen outline, which is a little bit of bleed, a little bit of scratch. This I made for a Scotty Young cover, and I thought it came out really good. I think it was a Marvel cover. Um, I've always wanted to make more of these, but I really haven't had the opportunity of any character that I thought it would fit with yet. Here's some more crazy monstery balloon strokes. These are all Adobe Illustrator brushes that I've made. This is my, this one I use probably almost as much as the Tech Pen balloon. This is a calligraphic stroke which is just a little bit thicker on some sides and a little bit thinner on the other. It looks great with um, calligraphic pens, pen style balloons, uh, dialogue rather. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have standard balloon tails. I've got a lot of balloons here, but you don't see a lot of just basic, you know, triangular balloon tails. That's because uh, I just create them on the fly. It's just faster for me to, you know, type, have the text copied into their the area type object, put the balloon around it, and then just, you know, just make a tail real quick. 
and it ends up exactly where I need it, exactly the shape I need. I grab them both, and you know, and there you go. That's it. There's no stretching. There's no digging through a whole bunch of tails to find the one that I think is long enough or curved enough or whatever. Um, you'll see an exception to that in a minute. So here are some wobbly balloons in case someone is dizzy or drunk. I use those quite a bit. Here's some more crunchy, monstery Adobe Illustrator brushes. Um, these I, I was working, I think, on um, Justice League. And there was a character who spoke in sort of this green energy balloon. And I, I looked it up online. I found some old, you know, hand-lettered styles of how this character was speaking. So I made digital versions of them. And I held on to them because I thought they would make good, like, fire balloons or something later on. Um, again, something I've rarely used. Here's a bunch of crunchy balloons, this section right here. Good for monsters and things. Uh, the rarely used yet super cool thought balloons. Lots and lots of thought balloons. Um, you'll see some the little thought balloon tails. I, I tend to keep them here just for reference, so all my thought balloon tails are uniform sized. Let's see, these I think I might have been lettering the mask for Dark Horse when I made these, and I don't think I've ever used them since. Possibly, I can't remember, but they are pretty neat. I should use these more often. Um, down here we've got, I think these are telepathic balloons. I designed these for telepathy. You know, these would float in the middle of a page. They might be a different color, um, just with some text inside that might be italic. Uh, and here's that exception to those tails. So these, while I don't save regular old three-point triangular tails, I do tend to save specialty tails, I don't know, for lack of a better term. Things, tails that are wiggly or crunchy for monsters. And that's mostly because I, I'll i get compulsive with these when I try to design them and I spend way too much time trying to get them exactly the way I want them. So it's faster to me, for me to save them um, and use them over and over again if I feel like it. Let's see, so that's the bottom of that. We've done up here. Now we're getting into some caption banners up here. Um, I don't know why I saved this trim behind head note. I think I usually, I, there have been times when I'm moving and lettering so fast that I don't have time to go trim a sound effect around a character or something. So I'll leave myself a note when I go back. You know, Remember to trim this behind this guy's head. Here's some fake notebook paper for characters who might be journaling. Here's another banner, and these banners are just basically three pieces. It's just this, and that, and that. And those make up that sort of three-dimensional folded effect. Um, now we've got radio balloons. So these are very uniform radio balloons. The spikes are all the same, roughly the same width apart, and the same height. I very rarely use those. I tend to use these more, the irregular spiked radio balloons. They just look a little more interesting, a little more visually, you know, organic. These I made and I don't think I've ever used. They look interesting, but I've just never had call for it. Or they're so far out to the side of the artboard that I just don't usually see them. Um, here's some radio balloon tails. Again, I tend to be too fussy when it comes to creating these, so when I get ones that I like, I save them and it saves me a little time in the long run. Uh, here we've got some burst or shouting balloons. Basically I use either one of these two styles, which is here's the scalloped edge sort of shout balloons. Um, and here are the more vintage, you know, spiky, triangular spike shout balloons. And my decision process on these is basically what's the, you know, what's the genre of the book? What's going to look better with the art? which is pretty much my decision-making criteria for everything. But um, here we've got some TV screen-shaped balloons, maybe for a TV announcer or something like that, or maybe even a robot. Um, here's a case where you've got a radio balloon, but maybe the radio announcer is speaking in captions. You know, we can't see the radio or a TV announcer, and it's a combination between a caption box and a radio balloon. 
Here's some crunchy monster captions. Um, I don't know why I saved them in black. They could just as easily be white with a black outline. Um, some rounded edged rectangles. I use these on middle west. A little bit of an organic wobble to the outlines. Um, sort of a tip of the hat to European balloon styles. Um, these are pretty cool. A little bit like a Kirby, Jack Kirby crackly kind of thing going on. Um, don't use those very often. Here's some more balloons with some, some funky brush strokes on them. Don't use those very often. Here's some swampy, I don't know. These things don't have names, so I'm just sort of making them up on the fly for you. This is sort of like a swampy, I don't know, drippy kind of thing. And this is, I think these are two layers. These are just a white section and a black section. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, again, so, so when I'm, you don't, you don't see any dialogue lettering in, in this template. That's because I use a type morgue. And this type morgue is all my most often used uh, dialogue fonts already set in area type objects. And you can read my book for more about area type objects. But there's an elliptical one. There's an elliptical one with the top cut off for when you have dialogue butted against a border and one that's square for captions. And the point of doing this is that these, when you paste text into, text into these, it flows. You see how it's changing? Depending on how, you know, imagine that this balloon had a whole bunch of text in it and I could make it tall or wide or whatever and it just sort of restacks everything for me. Just a little time saving tip. Um, caption, caption styles are over here. And so when I'm deciding on a new project template, I'll decide on which dialogue styles I want, and I'll just copy them over into the template on the lettering layer. So, oh, and of course, if I have a regular page template, I've got a two-page spread template. So this is already set up at the proper dimensions of a two-page spread, which is 13.5 inches wide. That's the big difference. It's, you know, two pages, but there's... There's a lack of a gutter in between them. And basically the assets are pretty much all the same. When I update one, I update the other. Um, and another tip is always, always, always make backup copies of your blank templates because you will inevitably accidentally save over a template. Uh, it happens to me probably once a month. And then you've got that nice, fresh, backup copy that you can just resave as the main copy again. All right, I think that's about everything. Um, thanks for coming along for the ride. I will talk to you soon.